acknowledging Women's Day. We are marking it. We are celebrating in some ways and mourning in other ways um, as we consider the past injustices against women. The day itself marks a march back in 1956 when over 20,000 women marched on the union buildings to protest against the extensions to the past laws. Um, since then, there have been numerous um, advances and moves and some regression. And we do acknowledge that there is ongoing violence against women in South Africa and across the world. On a daily basis, there are small and large wrongs perpetrated against women, and, and that is a fact to mourn. So as I was thinking about how we might mark this day in, in the online space in the past week, um, I contacted a few of the women in our congregation and asked them to give us their experiences, some positive, some negative, of being a woman in South Africa today. So let's hear from them now. One positive thing about being a woman at my age in South Africa is that we finally have equal rights as men do, unlike women from decades ago. This allows us to be treated fairly and we get to pursue our dreams regardless of our gender. One negative thing is that we are still being objectified and sexualized, and not only in our country, but across the world. People still perceive us as inferior, and because of this, we are easy targets for crimes such as sexual assault, abuse, and getting robbed daily. One negative thing about being a woman in South Africa, um, as a young woman and a student, I often feel very vulnerable and fearful when I am in an unknown place by myself or walking the streets by myself. Um, we are raised to feel uh, hyper vigilant and just hypersensitive about our surroundings, um, especially when we're alone. Um, yeah, and one positive thing about being a woman in South Africa would be the immense strength and um, solidarity that I have experienced from women coming together to fight gender-based violence and to unite and to, to speak up and to find our voices as women in a country that is still developing and still facing a lot of necessary change. Um, and that has strengthened me and encouraged me. One positive thing about my community is that the respect that they give to me as a woman and regarding whatever am I saying, the, the things that I say, they take them and they see me as a woman. But one negative thing about my community is that they put you as a woman in a certain box that you need to dress a certain way. Uh, so that they can regard you as a woman. So if you dress a certain way, for instance, if you dress in the jeans and they don't regard you as, as a, the woman, so that's one negative thing about my, my community. Being a woman working in higher education, as a lecturer and as a researcher, comes with the challenges of being seen through the gender lenses. When I'm committed, and I'm passionate about seeking justice in the research space, I'm often described as feisty and intense. When my male colleagues operate in the same way, they are described as good leaders. Thankfully, over the last few years, God has helped me to understand that I am a passionate and feisty leader. And instead of focusing on that negative, I put to action the positive that can come from it by helping other women, particularly women of color, to embrace who they are, to embrace the intensity that they might bring, the passion that they might bring, to not leave behind your domestic life and your social life and the, the knowledges you have as a woman in our country. 
but to see those as strengths and it's what we offer and what we can bring towards transformation in our country. I'm deeply grateful to God for just the joy and the freedom that I have in South Africa to be a woman, to be myself without legal um, restrictions and oppression. I'm so grateful for that. I'm saddened by the lack of respect and the violence that is sometimes perpetrated by some men against women in South Africa. I know that breaks God's heart and it certainly breaks mine too. Shanika, Jenna, Lisa, Winnie, Joanne and Colleen. I am so grateful to you all for being willing to graciously share your hearts with us. Thank you. My intention in asking those questions was to encourage us in how far we've come and to challenge us in how much work still needs to be done. And so let's not be afraid to sit with the discomfort of the truth being spoken. And let us bring our sorrow before God. As men, let's confess our sin and our silence, our wrong actions or our lack of action. And as women, let's bring our heartfelt sadness to the God of comfort.